Hey guys, welcome to part three of the review of the tournament I played over the weekend that I happened to win. And um, we're, we played down to three-handed in the first two videos, and believe it or not, I think there's over a hundred hands left in this thing. So blinds are pretty big now. <laughs> They're um, 35,000, 70,000 with antis. So everybody has actually decent sized stacks at this point, but I think there's still about 150 big blinds in play. So normally something like this would go pretty quickly, but there is some room for play here. So um, yeah, so we'll just continue on like we've done. I raise King Jack suited, blind versus blind. And I also wanted to mention that I re-downloaded the hands and I reconverted them. So there's a feature in Ignition Converter where you can have it show all hands revealed. I don't know why you have to click that, but it should be automatic. But regardless, we'll now be able to see what everybody's hand is after the hand is over, and that should be a cool addition. I mean, I'm not going to go back through and do the first two parts again, but for future tournaments and such, we'll be able to look at all hands going forward. So I get an ace high flop, which I am expecting to sometimes have the best hand, but if I don't, I usually have a couple overs. This guy's, I mean, the stats kind of belie what he's his real playing style. I mean, it shows I have six hands on him, but I should have more than that. Maybe that just means three-handed because of the filters, and that's probably what it means. Um, <clears throat> he has been three-betting, um, so I would anticipate him to three-bet a lot of aces here, so I discount that from his range. So I think we just have the best hand a lot, and if not, we have room to improve. We get the best turn card. It's kind of an awkward stack where I don't think check... If we had like a 1.5 million, we would just check-shove this, but since we have... Um, still quite a bit of room to play. I think just barreling here is the best play. And probably barreling off because I think he folds a 6 or 4 by the river if that's the case. But for some reason I decided to check. But I think maybe I am just don't want to get blown off my hand because I don't want to bet fold this. I can't really bet fold this. So I think I went for the check um, call if he bets. But I expected him to check back a 6 or 4 a lot. So... I'm kind of a little wary of a weak ace here, but I think certainly we have the right price to check call. Um, and we hit a king, so, I mean, diamonds gets there, but I think he raises that on the flop a lot. Um, so really, I think he's going to have a weak ace, which he'll check back a lot, um, or like, I don't know, just a 6x, 4x hand he'll check back a lot. Um, so the only thing he's going to bet here when we check probably is either the nuts or nothing. So I think the check call is the best play here. I mean, alternatively, we could bet fold, but I think we're only getting called by better if we do that. So I think I just like a check call. And he checks back and ends up having a six, just like we anticipated. I guess he was just protecting his hand on the turn, which is which is a fine play. So we have on the very next hand, ace eight on the button. And we get our steal through. And we're just going to defend. We're not going to 3-bet and try and get it in with a 6 in this dynamic. We're just going to play pots. Assuming we're going to have more post-flop skill than these two guys. Um, so we're just going to try and see a lot of flops. Play a lot of high, higher SBRs. And just try to outplay players and just try to whittle them down. Um, we don't flop anything. It's a high, low, low board. I could check raise this. But since we probably have the best hand, I either want to call or fold here. Um, I elect just to fold. Um, play conservatively. Which I think is a fine option to do against these two players. So they get a pot against each other. We'll watch them just battle it out. Looks like it's probably not going to see a showdown here. This guy's probably going to fold. Yep. And we see that he had a straight. Raise the button. And we get flatted. We were certainly just going to get it in with these eights here if we got three bet. But we don't, so um, I think we just need to bet like 150,000 here and protect our hand. Just it gives us information as well. <clears throat> Once he calls in a jack, jack peels. I don't think he's gonna fold a king. Honestly, I think we would have to just barrel off some crazy amount. And I just don't think in this setting. I think it's better to conserve a 3.4 million stack and then basically the chip lead then to try to do some elaborate barrel off. I think he's also going to have some sixes and maybe some pairs like sevens. And we're going to see a showdown with those most of the time against in a tournament situation. So I think, I mean, most of the hands he's going to have here he's not going to bluff with unless it's diamond drawn. Like, people just like to raise diamond draws in tournaments. 
So I think when he bets the river, he's just going to have it. And now we'll either be up against a king or a six here. And we're not going to get him off the king. And it's hard to get more value from a six, so we're just going to check back and hope we're good. And uh, that was kind of brutal. He had a gut shot and a backdoor diamonds, and he called and turned his jack. So a little unfortunate there for us. And the next hand, we, I'm sure we're defending. Well, we should be defending king seven, I think, there. He had king three. Or I say 10-7. Um, but it's okay, it's also okay just not to play out of position there. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of success on when we're in position. So, um, so I go for my limp. And then just play pots. And I think we're still good here most of the time, honestly. So I think we just need to bet again. And I mean, I guess we could bomb this to try to get him off a chop. Um... But I, I think I just like just to check fold here. Um, and he did end up having a 7. Which we didn't know that in the tournament. Um, so I, I guess we made a correct fold and a correct non-bet. And we get our steal through and basically get our chips right back. Because blinds are worth so much now. And we're just going to play pretty tight in the blinds probably for the most part. And let them fight it out a little bit. He ended up having top pair in that hand. See, I don't, I didn't know this during the tournament, so I had a feeling these guys were just playing fairly straightforward, which is why I was just playing pretty tight and just going for more value lines than, uh, and just take advantage of some fold equity here and there. But I didn't see any reason to get. I mean, I'm going to get out of line. When I think when it's fine to get out of line, but with stack sizes as they are, I think it's better just to grind it out with them and just basically profit from correct steals and make them make out of position mistakes and just bleed money my way that way rather than the other way around so I mean that was just kind of my strategy is don't I don't need to get to I don't need to play high variance poker versus these two players is what I'm saying I think they're just gonna shoot themselves in the foot eventually so that was kind of my goal here was just to play straightforward and I I normally would raise that but I'm not sure why I didn't I should be raising 100% on the button. And I continue with my strategy here. And um, if I remember correctly, he was very sticky in these spots. Um, it just wasn't working like it does against most players to just call and then lead every flop. So I do elect just a barely ace, which I think is standard. So obviously I'm just going to bet with my open ender. And like once again, he's just very sticky. And we turn a 10, so I think we just go for a check call line probably most of the time. Um, I think check calling this river is fine too. And he just had a gut shot and a straight flush draw. So, I mean, I kind of like my bet, bet, check call, but I'm fine with also bet, check call, check call. But I, I, I understand the reasoning not to, not to check the turn because it just gives him free cards. Um, it also allows us to control the size of the pot. So... It's kind of a cash game play there, but it's fine. And now we're just, we're a pretty good chip lead now. We have almost a million chip lead over a tie for second place. So we like our standing. Um, I should be opening jack three there. So we flop the nuts here. I think there's many ways. I have a million chip lead on this guy, so I could check shove this and just put a ton of pressure on a 10. Or make him put it in with a worse flush draw, or or not. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on a 10, actually. <laughs> um, that's that, I misspoke there. Um, I don't want him to fold a 10, but I want him to make a big mistake with it. So maybe if I check raise, he continues with a 10. And we get it in worse, get it in against worse queens, 7x, maybe flush draws, which we're fine getting it in with because we're beating most of those. Um, I go for the check raise, but he doesn't bite, so I think just bet, bet now. It's fine, and he just folds, and we can see what he had by doing this. He ended up having 9-5. Did he call a turn bet? I don't guess there ever was a turn bet. Yeah, we did bet small in the turn, he called, I guess he was open-ended, 9-10 Jack Wayne, yeah. So, okay. So, once again, I could just shove here. Um, 
let me refresh things here because I think the big blinds did not refresh. So I mean, he has 29 big blinds, so we should just be shoving here. I think it's standard. I don't know why I'm just calling. I guess he had 34 big blinds. Um, yeah, we should be shoving here. Just play so much easier. We should just take this dead money. I'm not sure why I'm just flatting. That's kind of a mistake. We have a we have 1.5 million chips even if we get called and lose. So that's a big mistake. I'm fine with the check call as play, but I think this is too weak sauce with our chip lead. We should have just been <sighs> exerting the full pressure of our stack size instead of playing it this way. Um, we end up winning anyway against Jack Eight, but I, th I mean I guess hindsight's 2020, but we should probably just be shoving preflop there. Did this player slow play kings? I think he did. He just flat at kings preflop. Eh, I, I kind of like that. If he has a read this guy. This guy doesn't look aggressive though, so... I mean, I guess trapping is fine at this point. Let's see what this player ended up having. Okay, pocket deuces. See, um, a three bet preflop. You know, you could have got the money in there against deuces. Or at least it made it build a much bigger pot. So that's the danger in slow playing when a guy's not necessarily super aggressive. I don't think this guy was that aggressive. Um, I actually remember him being pretty passive. So I think that's a mistake. This guy should not be slow playing that. Um, so we probably have the best hand here. So I like a pretty big bet of like 400,000. Just I don't know why I'm checking back there. That's pretty weak. I should not be doing that. Um, now I'm just forced to call. And yeah, I mean, I could have found this out on the flop for probably cheaper. I mean, just happened to have trips. A little unfortunate, but as played, I mean, I mean, there's nothing else I can do. I have to call that river, I guess. But I know I have to read this guy's passive, but it just felt wrong to fault that at the time, I think. <clears throat> when I think that if he's going to barrel the turn, he's probably going to barrel the river as well as a bluff. Or not barrel the turn, but bet the turn as a bluff. I think he would feel like he was obligated to follow through. Uh, maybe he could have had just a high diamond on the turn. Something like that. 4-5, which he's n unlikely to have since he's not going to bet a 5. Anyway, so I think I misplayed that hand. I'm misplaying a lot of hands, but it's just hard to hard to gauge what my thought process was back then and what the game flow was. I was sick again, so I don't remember much of this. I think we just bet this fairly large just to protect cup because we probably have the best hand and to make our fold a lot easier. And he is passive, so I think just betting is always the best against that type of player. Um, they're only going to raise when they have it, so bet fold for the win. Um, so I don't raise a6 this time. And I'm assuming I'm just pot controlling. Now I'm just going to bet and get a fold. Assuming he just had crap here. We had 8-9 suited. He would have called a preflop raise. That's surprising that he didn't bet when I checked because he had two overs and a gut shot, so... It's kind of weird. Yeah, um, <laughs> I should be shoving this. Uh, this guy's opening really wide, so not sure why I'm playing it that way. Yeah, so I like my check call, check, 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 um, just because. Well, it's hard for him to have anything that's ever going to call a bet, so I'm just looking for him maybe to do a bluff on the river. So, um, But being this this player type, maybe I should have done a small bet on the river to maybe get some value from a 6, a jack, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I probably should be betting that river. But I'm sure I was not playing my A game at this point. I mean, I, I think I did make a conscious effort, if I remember correctly, just to play straight forward. I mean, we don't get three-handed very often. We know these are inferior players as far as skill-wise, right? I mean, it's just likely that these players are not very good. And you can see that they're not very good, and I could see that through the course of the tournament, following these players. And it's just a freaking tournament. I mean, there are not that many great players in tournaments anyway. But luck of the draw, you know, it's just me unlikely that I would be facing two stronger players. So I think I just kind of like my game plan. It looks like I'm misplaying this, but I'm taking that. I'm, I think I might be a little... I don't know what's the word, ethnocentric or something when I when I review this now. Because I'm taking it from the standpoint of playing against cash game players, and even some bad cash game players are much better than these players. So I kind of like my conservative strategy of just chipping away and letting them make mistakes. 
So I'm not going to second guess myself too much here because I obviously it worked out for us, right? And we have sizable chip lead now, so I guess we're just going to play straightforward, just let these guys bleed chips. Um, just play pots. We should be betting this, though, once he checks, just to protect our hand. And because we probably have the best hand, we don't want him to bluff us off our hand on the turn. And he, he did just have king deuce, so we should be betting that flop when he checks to us because I just think he's weak all the time. Um, so that's another... That one I can say is a sure mistake. I'm, I don't know why we wouldn't bet that flop. Maybe because we have showdown value and we think he's only he's not going to be the bluffing type player. But you don't want to create a bluffing type player though, because I think when you check back the flop, you're just giving him a license. Even a tight player might bluff that spot. So yeah, I don't like the way I play that. Um, so obviously we have the best hand here almost always. So we're just going to bet for value. I don't know if we need to see what he had. I guess it's kind of irrelevant, right? It was a limp pot. And he just had e3. Yeah, I kind of like a limp raise there instead of the way I played this. If he's, if we're going to limp, I mean, he hasn't really been raising wide, but I think this hand is too strong. First of all, we could just open shove this. Because if we lose, we're not, we're in pretty good shape, right? So I think we could just kind of get aggressive versus this player. I, I just think because of what the top prize was, I think I was playing a little bit on scared money in this tournament. And I think I was just kind of going overboard with the plan of just playing small pots. I think when the when you have this sizable chip lead you just need to play a little bit more aggressive. Um Yeah, I mean I guess I have nothing else to say about that. But when a guy has less than twenty big blinds, don't give him a chance to make a play against you. Just end the hand, kinda. So now we're just forced to play a guessing game out of position and I mean he did end up having Ace King. Once again, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? I think. Um, yeah, I'm not going to... I mean, we have 2.6 million if we lose and shove there. Shove and lose there. And we basically put him at <clears throat> 3.8 or something. So we're still in decent shape if we had lost that. But yeah, I mean, I guess in this thing, we're just sticking to our guns. <laughs> Maybe my mentality that I'm having reviewing this is just way off base because I don't have access to the game flow stuff that I was experiencing during this tournament. And it look, looks like I'm winning so many buttons that I don't really <laughs> need to get quote unquote out of line or play big pots at all. So I guess, yeah, whatever. So I'm obviously gonna call this because it's only 17 big blinds. Um, and we have a hand pretty strong, pretty strong hand, so. And uh, brutally, brutally, <laughs> I would say really brutally, he hits a gut shot on the river. I mean, an ace was an out for him as well, or an eight. Um, actually, yeah, an eight was an out for him as well. So he had a lot of outs. I mean, what was his equity? So actually, we had 20%, 80% equity on this turn, 70% on the flop. First of all, yeah, we had 70% equity on the flop, 80%. So we couldn't win an 80-20 on the turn, unfortunately. So we would have been heads up at that point with a massive chip lead. Um, but yeah, that's what I said in this. It was kind of a roller coaster. So this is just the first example of that. Um, so we'll move on. I think we're going for the check shove here. And he obliges. Why did I not shove there? I guess because we wanted to give him a chance to barrel off. It's kind of a miserable river card for us. And he was just bluffing, so actually our line turned out to be ideal for us. Um, I mean, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I like to check shove on the turn, though. And obviously this guy hasn't been three betting, so we're just going to fold. He had ace jack. And we're going for the check call, check raise, I guess, here. And I'll just bet and hope he, I like the pot size bet, just hoping he has a queen or six. And he didn't have anything. Yeah. 
So we've rebuilt the second place again. Doesn't take much, right? So I guess our strategy of small ball poker is, is paying off for us anyway. Um, I kind of like a defend here on the button just because of our stack size situation. Um, if we hit anything, we can just continue. If we can't, we can safely fold. Still have a decent amount of chips. I hate that I have to keep refreshing this. We do. We don't hit nothing, so I guess we just fold. And he was bluffing with the best hand. It's Queen Jack. Um, I think he did get out of line with his three betting in this tournament um, in these stages right here. I was pretty confident of that. It's just I never had a hand to play back that I remember. Um, I remember thinking at this point that this guy, once he doubled up, started being more aggressive. That I definitely did not want to play this guy heads up because I think he was slightly stronger. I think I wanted to play this guy heads up. I just That was just a thought I had at the time. So it looks like he is kind of opening up now. And once again, we're going to play, and obviously we're never folding now. We're just going to check shove, and he f puts in half our stack and folds, um, which is a really good result for us. He didn't. He wasn't exactly three betting light. He would have got it in pretty flop. He bet a little bit too much on that flop, though. Yeah, he should be betting like 400,000 in folding, not 750. So that's a big betting error on his part. We should just be betting pretty big here. 200,000 is fine. This guy's playing fitter fold, I guess, seems like. Yeah, we're just going to play straightforward versus that guy. So then we're going to check call, now lead this turn. And I think bet fold, 400,000 is probably the best here. A little bit too small, but it worked out. I don't think this is the type of player we're going to induce a raise from. So against his hand range, I think he's going to raise when he has a straight or call when he has a six or call all his two pairs or maybe call with a ten. If uh, Yeah, I guess the 200,000 is fine there against this player. Since he's only, he doesn't, he's not really going to, we're not going to induce this type of player normally. So I don't think our bet sizing matters. I like the smaller size. We lose least when he has it. I just like a bet on the turn here. And now a check call, probably. And he spikes his nine on the river for two pair. Yeah, this guy got lucky against this several times like this. That was kind of frustrating throughout the tournament, throughout the shorthanded play anyway. Just protect our hand here. I think we shut down versus this player. We should be. And unfortunately, he just had seven, so we maybe could have got him off that, but I like the shutdown, though. Uh, I guess we just give up on this spot, right? Yeah, he ended up just having a flush draw, but still beating us. This is a weird spot because this guy is not three bet yet, really that much. I mean, I guess he has, but he's had it, I guess, when he three bet. Um, so yeah, I was kind of torn on what to do here. I think I I took a long time to act. I think in a t standard tournament against standard players, this would be a shove. But I think with this player's rebetting, I think we have to fold. And we do fold. And you end up having jacks, so I would have been out of the tournament most likely right there if I had taken the standard line. So I made a hero fold, and I didn't know this at the time, but <laughs> I feel really good now about that fold. I would not be folding that, though. <laughs> to a three bet. So this kind of happened several times where we would, um, yeah, I think this is just a great check call, check call, check call spot for us because I think we're just good all the time here. We end up having a flush draw and a gutter, but yeah, I mean, I don't think I need to cover that hand. I think you guys that are watching this will know what's going on in that hand. <clears throat> we can't fold threes on this board after we did three bets, so um, I think we just have the nuts there all the time. Unfortunately, he didn't bluff the river. I guess because the board pair and he figured I would call for chops anyway. Then he would just check it back. I hope he's chopping. <coughs> chopping. So we once again we rebuild to 3.5 million. Just kind of we just did this several times where we'd build up to a decent stack, then we get cooler or whatever, and then you know rinse and repeat, right? It got really frustrating after a while, and we get the miracle turn, but we're not in the hand. <laughs> 
And I wanted to know what this guy had. Oh, he, f he river to set of deuces. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. I was wondering what he was potting with there. I thought maybe he had spiked the two pair or something, but yeah, set. Frickin' A. And oh, yeah, I wanted to see what this guy had folded. Um, ace jack. Okay. So this guy decided not to three bet his ace jack. Maybe he was trapping me? I, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Um, oh, okay, so, yeah, this is a good hand. So I'd like to limp call, and this guy had been just floating a lot of flops against me and then betting and tra taking it down, so I decided just to check, raise this flop with backdoor straight draws. Just because he had been kind of getting out of line in this spot, so I just decided to play back at him here, and I just figured one and done it. If I lose, if he raises, I have 2.7 million. If not, I want a sizable pot, and maybe I've discouraged him from playing back at me in this spot in the future. So I kind of was making this as an investment to my future play here. And I remember, I, I remember my thought, pro thought process in some of these hands. <laughs> it comes back to me. Um, so now I'm back to 3.6 million, liking my spot. And... Yeah, I remember thinking in this hand that I just made that play against him and figured he would just play straight forward, so that's why I just took the line I did, and he ended up having a pair and a flush draw. So I was right, he did have something strong there. I'm going to just watch to make sure he is um, playing straight forward, like I think he will be after that. Because people remember that when you check raise him like that. Um, just going to fold the jack five, I'm sure. This guy just seems to always have it when he raises. Um, I'm not, I just decided not to play the 6-4 offsuit out of position. I like my chip position. Um, he hasn't been raising unless he has it blind versus blind. Once again, he had it. So, But we're winning so many buttons that <laughs> I kind of like the way I play this. If I wasn't winning that many bu buttons, I would have had to have been really more aggressive in certain spots. So um, We were just looking to get it in here. Yeah, but he just calls. Um... I think just betting here is best play. I don't like to check. I don't know why I'm check calling here. Maybe keep the pot small and pick up more equity, which I do. Um, I guess bet folding now is probably the best play. But instead, we like to check call, and he has the straight. And once again, we just... I mean, it's not really that big of a cooler. We kind of let him get let him get there. But he was opening on the flop. He wasn't going anywhere, so I guess it could have been worse, right? And he's just never going to have an ace here, so we just bet and he folds. I like to defend. I, I kind of like a le big lead on this turn, because I just think he never has anything here. Yeah. And I mean, he's just got a really wide button ri range anyway. I like to play the 5-7. We're never folding once we hit a pair. Never folding. Ah, oh, we shouldn't be folding that. Luckily, we did, and he just had it. I guess maybe we just had a read that he wasn't barreling light. So, if that's the case, I'm okay with a fold. Yeah, so, he, I guess he was 3-betting um, much more than he had been before, but not really getting that much out of line. But you can see his stack off thresholds appear to be a lot wider than what we're doing. So, he's playing a little more gambly game, I guess. Gambly, is that a word? So we're going for the limp trap here. We're going to limp shove this. Yeah. And we actually get called, so we're, our tournament's on the line here. And we spike a queen. And a straight. And we win a flip. So that's really the first all in we've won since that triple up early in the tournament, right? Um, or did we win one three-handed, four-handed? I don't remember. Four-handed, I guess we did. But... Yeah, so we've been running pretty bad in all ends up till this point. We had a chance to knock this guy out and couldn't do it, but we get lucky here and double up with our king queen to stay in the tournament. Now we have just have a massive chip lead, um, pretty massive. I mean, we have as many chips as both of them, so we have half the chips in play. So liking our chances, but I like just sticking with a conservative route here. I'm interested to see what he's shoving here. Okay, that's reasonable. 
with only 17 big blinds is reasonable. As advertised, this guy has strong hands when he raises. He wasn't raising very much. So, and now we see why. He was playing a tight range. I'm actually fine with an open shove here <laughs> with the queen 10. Don't give him a chance to make a play against me. I don't like the way I played this at all. Just don't like it. And he ended up having aces, so damn. We dodged a bullet there. I like the open shove. But <laughs> once again, my review is wrong, and I was correct in the moment. Just playing conservative, making them make mistakes. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to raise this guy. He's just... He's unlikely to bluff two streets, so not just standard value bet. Let's see what he had. He's kind of a fitter fold, one and done type player. So I think even folding the turn if he had barreled would probably be correct there. As crazy as that sounds. So this guy rebuilt the stack now. I basically still got about five million. So I hit the straight here. Don't think I get any value though. Fortunately, on this draw heavy board, he didn't have anything. He did have an ace pre flop. Once again, just a miserable flop. Wow, forgot about this hand. What did this, this guy just didn't fold an ace, did he? Okay, he just had open ended on the turn. And this guy had the straight. Wow. Curious. Okay, so he had the straight on the turn. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so this guy's like almost dead in the water here. Yeah, I remember thinking, uh oh, this guy's gonna bust and I have to play the guy I didn't want to play heads up, but whatever, right? So, yeah. I mean, this is standard, I think. Yeah, this guy ended up having queens. We knew he was strong here. That wasn't a big surprise. Okay, so we get an all-in. <laughs> and the king four hit diamonds. So it could have very well been heads up, which I would have been fine with, but I definitely wanted to prefer... I prefer to play this guy heads up. But just getting the heads up is fine. It's not like I'm like, was rooting for this guy or something, you know? Yeah, we're just trying to look, hit a hand and bust this guy, but fortunately, well, we ended up winning anyway. With our flush draw. Wow, we got him full queen jack and he's ten. Cool. When did this guy call on the flop and then fold the turn with? Yeah, this was kind of a crazy hand. This guy calls 500,000, basically a third of this guy's stack, and then somehow finds a fold on the turn. Okay, he was open-ended. Didn't get there and then check folded. This guy had two fair, okay, yeah, well, still don't care for that, I guess, I don't know. So, once again, we're just flopping miserably. <laughs> Um, I think this is pretty much the case throughout this three-handed play, is I just wasn't hitting anything on flops, really, that much. So, I was just basically just trying to maintain my stack as I was being card dead, I guess. Um, I, I guess just set mining here is the best play. This guy, this looks really strong when this guy does this. So we were just trying to hit fives. And I, I'm, I'm fine with the peel in case he has like ace-king and ace-queen, and we'll uh, just shut down. But we just get a really miserable turn card. And but actually win. So now we have this super massive chip lead here. Liking our chances. <laughs> and of course we're just gonna shove the king queen. And amazingly get called, hit a queen, and beat ace jack. So we win another flip, and now we are heads up with the player we wanted to be heads up with a massive chip lead. And you would think this tournament's almost over, right? I got news for you. <laughs> There is 120 more hands left in this tournament. And how in the hell that happened, I don't know. <laughs> how did we lose our 56 big blind, the 10 big blind lead? 
I don't know. So we shove this hand, so we're going to have an even bigger chip lead. Um, get to 9 million, basically. Should be shoving this as well, just to apply pressure. Yeah. So we got this guy on the ropes. Um, curious to see. Yeah, king nine, okay. All right, so first BS hand that we have, we ran into jacks, which, I mean, whatever, right? We had an ACF jacks, pretty standard stuff. We still have a massive chip lead, so we should be fine. He has, still only has 18 big blinds. So we're still a huge favorite in this tournament. So our plan is just to open 82 versus this guy, probably, and shove a wide range as well. We have an 8 9, so it looks like he's opening up his game a little bit. So I like this play here. Wow, I thought we were going to get through this entire three-handed match in this video. Maybe we will. So obviously I'm just getting it with the fours. Shoving the jack nine, standard. Defending, check foldings, def that's standard. I like that play. Yeah, I think against this player we just probably fold this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the call there. He's just ended up working out for us, but eh. It was such a big raise pre flop. I'm surprised he didn't just follow through there. Um and maybe it wasn't such a big raise. What was his raise? Okay. Well it was less than three X, so yeah, I'm fine with the defend there, whatever. We have Queen 10, we have a strong hand that flops well. It's not quite good enough just to get it in, so never mind. So we're just going to shove Ace 10. Got him back down below 1.7 again. Obviously, just check shoving this. Getting a fold. He had Ace 9, it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, we can't get him to shove there. We're like rooting for him to shove, but he doesn't. We we'll still have him down really low again. And. Once again, <laughs> we've whittled him down to nothing. Um, oh, maybe we'll just show the hands now uh, forever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So he shoves jack 10 and we have to fold. So he flops top here and shoves. Kind of weird play. I don't know why he wouldn't just be taking a chance and checking there. That's reasonable. I'm sure he would have called a shove there. He's folding the junk. Folding our junk. Folding his junk to our junk. Folding junk when we shove queen jack. Wow, so we got queens here. We probably should be thirding this if I just shove. Um, I'm sure we're going to shove here and he's going to call. So we have a 40% chance of winning the tournament now. We spike our 8 on the flop. We have an 87% chance. An 84% chance, and we lose to another straight that hit the river. Um, brutal stuff, similar to the hand earlier, where a 10 hit and he hit a straight. Um, so we, here we go again, right? Um, so now we folds that. We fold, calls, we get dominated here. Somehow win even though we're dominating, that shows the power of aggression that. Shoving here, I assume. Oh, wait, he's on the button. Never mind. So we defend the queen nine. That's fine. He spikes a six. Um, going back to our raising strategy. Folding that. He had ace queen. Okay, we run into deuces this time. Oh man, I hate even watch this hand again. It's so brutal. Um, so we don't hit anything on flop, but we turn our miracle three. The tournament is over, right? We just won eighteen hundred dollars. Ship it our way. Yeah, exactly. So onward we go <laughs> to the next hand. And now we're almost even. I mean, we got 5.6, he has 4.4. Um, brutal stuff. I'm dying at this point. It's after 10 o'clock at night. I just want this damn thing over with. I want to go to bed. I'm tired. I'm sick. But, I mean, I was out of my chair 
when the th went before the flopping came. Then I saw the three. I threw my arms up in the air. And it was the worst feeling in the world when that freaking six came. Um, so we hit the miracle here. Um, so I guess we just bet for value. I'm assuming I'm bet folding here. And we get called. And once again, we have a massive chip lead. And he traps us with ace-king, but we don't bite. Went another pot. Just shoving the ace-king. Get it in versus jack-10 with ace-king. Yes, right? This is awesome. We're 71%. Boom, 20%. And we lose. So now he's got the chip lead. Once again, worst case scenario galore here, right? Um, and this, I like my bet here, and he just folds a six, and we win. Folding there, we have the chip lead again. Keep getting chip leads. Keep whittling him down. Out playing him, I guess. Taking all the dead money because he's a tight player. We shove this. Fold. We're back up to six point six. Just playing our hands. I like our non C bet on that board because he's got such a tight range. And for some reason he never bets his 10, but whatever. I like the bet here with the open ended. I guess he's betting a gut shot. But nice if that straight had come in because we would have had him. Um, defending with 8 5 and flopping too fair. How did he know to defend that 8 5 there? Wow, this is such a brutal run out for us because we hit the nine on the river. But we find the hero fold. Wow, I'm impressed. Impressed at myself. <laughs> um, he picks up king, queen, shoves, yada, yada. Shoves his ace, ten, standard. We got a jack, standard. He's got an open ender, he's not going anywhere. And for whatever reason, we check it down and he wins. He spikes a five on us. Jeez. And we somehow hit our straight on the river. <laughs> and we get a little lucky there. Unlucky than lucky. I guess we're checking down showdown value here. Yeah, standard stuff. I'm not sure why he didn't shove his. Look at this flop, though. I mean, the money could have easily gone in here and the tournament over. But if he slow plays it, though. I mean, if he raises here, I'm just putting it in, right? With my op with my gut shot and flush draw. So his slow play here saved our asses. Um, and then he finally shoves the river when we have nothing. So we are able to conserve 2.8 million. I like our play there. I don't like his play because he should have just won the tournament. <clears throat> it would be over right now if he had just played a little faster. Never slow play, guys. <laughs> of course, he has the nuts now, so we're just giving up against this player. So we're down to 1.4 million suddenly here, and uh, it's just... It's kind of a hopeless feeling, but I never actually felt like I was giving up. Um, I, I I just thought all along that I had a chance in this thing. Um, so I never gave up hope. And we win with King, Queen 7 versus... Um, he calls with Jack 10. We fade a flush draw. We, f we, a st we fade a straight on the turn. We fade his Jack and his 10. We amazingly win that hand. And then he shoves. Very next hand, we have Ace Queen. And we double up. We fade Kings and Eights, and we double up again. Um, so now, hopefully, we're just off to the races here. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty dire there just for a second, wasn't it? Standard stuff. Rebuilding our stack. See, he's just playing fitter fold here. So it just makes it very easy to play against. We just have to avoid him making strong hands. And he made several strong hands, and there's nothing you can do. But just try and hang around until he either makes a mistake 
or you cooler him. But yeah, it's just all about dead money in this thing. So we bluff. <laughs> he hit a straight on us. Look at that. Yuck. Yeah. I remember feeling disgusted after that hand. For some reason, he doesn't raise his straight. <clears throat> so this thing just keeps dragging on and on and on. Now we've got him back down to 1.5 million again. Um, so seesaw, right? And we get him all in again with deuces, and boom, spikes an ace. This guy, I was just beginning to feel like, was a cockroach that there's just no way we we're going to beat this guy. I was really feeling demoralized at this point. <laughs> and sick. Um, but we still have the massive chip lead, so we can't be feeling too bad, right? Spike the 8. And see a showdown. Once again, we got him in dire straits. And we get this dominating hand. Ace-9 versus ace-queen. This is it, guys. We're going to win this. Boom! All right, let's just avoid a chop, right? Oh, crap. He's going to chop. Oh. <laughs> At least he didn't win, right? But once again, the tournament was over. And Ignition Poker, for whatever reason, gave him another chance. And I could see myself calling with a king-7 here. And I do. So far, so good. So far, so good. And we win! All right. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the tournament. Yeah, I was just looking through this and I realized there were some missing hands. I just paused the video for a second. Um, I don't know why these hands ended up out of order slightly, but there was this hand earlier, um, and that's how he had gotten so short suddenly. You may have noticed a, a continuum problem in there somewhere, and that's because this hand happened. I won this flip right before he got short again. Um, and I think there was an ace-ace versus ace-three. This is how I had gotten short at one point. Shorter again. Um, so I'm not sure why. The, there were like 20 hands here that were just completely out of order. And I'm not sure what happened. Something to do with the way I brought them up and hold a manager probably. So I apologize for these few hands being missing in there. But results the same. Um, it was just a little more brutal than you realize because I ran into aces at 1.2 with ace 3 and yada yada, right? So, yeah. So we ended up winning believe it was, what was it? Yeah, it was 18.72 and 52 cents there um, in that tournament. So it made our bankroll go from about 1,800 to about 3,700. So now we're playing 400 in L, 200 in L, 100 in L, we're mixing. So yeah, good times. But yeah, tune in every day on my um, stream on Twitch. I usually play from 3 to 5 every day. Um, sometimes at night, I usually take Sunday and Monday off, but would love it if you would stop by and uh, root for me as I try to build my bankroll up. The challenge is I'm trying to build my bankroll to 10000 from $25 so that I can play 1000 in L mixed with 600 in L and 400 in L, basically pay mid and high stakes. And then once I get to 10000 we'll come up with another challenge. I don't know what that will be yet, but just follow along and you will find out. So thanks for watching this uh, little mini series of videos where I took down an 8K guaranteed on ignition for over $1,800. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy.